Empower us to dare to be compassionate, that your dreams for our humanity may come true. To be imaginative that your kingdom come in and through us. To be disciplined, yet flexible, that we may prepare the way for you in our hearts and in our world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? 
you've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be the light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light barriers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Not that I put you there, now that I put you there, on a hilltop, on a light stand, Shine, keep open house, be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. You are the salt of the earth, O people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O people, life in the kingdom of God. You are a light on a hill, O people, light for the city of God. Shine so holy and bright, O people, shine for the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. Salt doesn't work alone. It preserves, it adds flavor, it sets things up, it changes the soil, the water, the function of the human body. For salt to work, it must be used with something. To be a disciple, Jesus is saying, is to be like salt mixed right into the middle of life, adding some zest and making a difference. And light is like salt. Like salt, light is essential for life and growth. It illumines things and brings the hidden into view. Light is measured by what it does, by how it changes the environs, in these words about salt and light, Jesus is telling his disciples that they must be effective. They must change their surroundings. We too are to be different from the world. By being different is not enough. Jesus also adds that the difference must be seen that the light cannot be hidden under a bushel where none can see it. The followers of Jesus cannot be separatists. They must be the ones who show up in the dark places of the world and light it up with the compassion of God.
In ancient times, salt was considered to be the one thing that could never be denatured. Mix it with water and you get salty water. Put it in soup and you get salty soup. Add it to other ingredients as you might, it is incorruptible. It was seen as a gift from heaven to humankind as a sign of the holy in the world. Salt therefore became the medium by which things were dedicated to God. To purify an offering, one rubbed it with salt. To sanctify an altar, one sprinkled it with salt. To polish the holy brass lampstands in the temple, one rubbed them with salt. Salt was the sign of the holy, the purifier. It was, universally underst- it was the universally understood symbol for the work of God in the world. For this use of salt transcended cultural boundaries as well. Egyptians, Mesopotamians, Syrians, and Hebrews all understood that salt sanctifies. Now hear the scripture again. You are the salt of the earth. You, I, we are the means by which God seeks to make the world holy. But if we cannot or will not accomplish this, if we become unholy, then what? If not through us, by what means will God sanctify the world, created to be perfect but fallen into pollution and desecration? If we, who call ourselves children of God, will not be holy, will not be used to sanctify, will not allow ourselves to be purified, with what shall God's will be done? We are not salt, we are the salt of the earth. We should be mixed up with the earth. We should be mixed up with the reality around us. We should be prepared to be thrown into the cooking pot of human affairs. We cannot just stand in front of the pot. We have to be put in that pot. We have to be mixed with the contents in that pot. We have to be boiled and smothered with it, practically disappearing in the process, but nevertheless, make it all tasty. We must be taste givers and taste makers in the human reality. In this world, in this life, on this street, in this town, in this city, in this country, in this world. Let us pray. Lord, may I be the salt of the earth that takes away the blandness in the routine of living that prevents the rottenness of hatred and greed from expanding around me, that brings compassionate healing to anguished souls I encounter. Lord, help me to be worth my salt. Infuse your saltiness in me so that I do not become flat and useless. In your name we pray, amen.
Jesus also speaks about the light we are supposed to be. He says, we are to be a light for the world. That doesn't mean we stand in our own light, glorifying its shine. Light alone is useless. It is blinding. It hurts. Light becomes useful when it makes us see things other than itself, the world around us. It becomes of use through us when it corresponds to what Jesus said of it. You are the light of the world. We should make things visible. We should light up possibilities. We should brighten our world. We should be the light, but not on our own. If we live and act like Jesus did, then we will be a consolation to others. We will be their guide to salvation, their hope, and their comfort. We are the lights in the darkness for the upright. We are generous and merciful and just. We take pity, we give, and we lend. We conduct our affairs with honor, and we will never waver. We have no fear of evil news, for with firm hearts we believe in the Lord. With steadfast hearts we will not fear, and we will work for justice for all. O oh God of light, may our light shine in ways that serve and honor you. May we be loving, just, and kind, proclaiming Christ in all we do. God, where your people are oppressed and where they cry out in despair, make us your light to heal, to bless, a witness, Lord, for you there. Christ, when your way is pushed aside by those who trust in wealth and might, make us your lamps that we may guide a searching world to your love's light. O Spirit, in this world of doubt, we often sin and drift away. When our faith is flickering out, shine on our path and light our way. We are called to be God's light for others. Light can be a comforting presence. It can offer peace and security. It can guide the way for those who are searching. The light we offer is not our own, but the light of Jesus Christ working in and through us. Let us pray. Lord, light your lamp within my soul that I may shine for you. Transfigure me and make me whole, transform and make me new. Then may your light be in my eyes to make your gospel known, till others find in glad surprise, my Lord is now their own.
Because you are the beloved children of God, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. You are God's representatives, God's vessels, God's instruments, the servants of God's kingdom on your planet. Since Jesus absented himself from your midst, you in field with his spirit are chosen and instructed to carry on his purpose among the peoples of the earth. You are to be like salt amidst the world corruption, lights with its darkness. It isn't enough to display your piety in religious exercises. You are called upon to de demonstrate and manifest God's love for the unlovely and unloved beings that cross your path. As you were introduced to God's love through Jesus Christ and through those who followed him, so your fellow beings are to see something of God's love through you. You may be the only means that God has of touching people around you with God's love, of relating to them God's word, of enabling them to discover God's saving grace. It isn't a, not enough to pray for those people who do, know, who do not know Christ as their savior and God as their creator. You must be willing to be instruments through which God can reach the lost and the wandering sinners around you. You then may pray in confidence for the strength and wisdom and div divine grace to be salt and light, to love as God loves, to reach out to them as God reaches out to you. You are by God's appointment and empowerment, the salt and the light, the life-giving channel or transmitter of God's grace and power to the world. May the blessings and guidance of God be upon those who are faithful to this important call. We are pilgrims on a journey. We're together on this road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the nighttime of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too.
Welcome. <laughs> We're glad you could join us for Vespers and all that jazz. However, you could be here in pre you know in your presence or through technology. Um, one of the things I want to say is that next week, look on the back of your bulletin. The theme is truly happy. I could use some of that. I'm really intrigued. I hope you are too. Uh, we have Tuesdays in the chapel every Tuesday. Aaron Marble from Jefferson Street, uh, MBC will be here. So you can come for a midweek Sabbath break. Our Poets Corner is always on the fourth Thursday of the month. And the art exhibit is truly extraordinary. It's over in the main building, the Lasky building right there, second floor. And the title is To Bend Without Breaking, Surviving Difficult Times. Susan Rua has done a masterful job of creating 22 pieces that reflect attitudes and practices that can help us through difficult times. I want to thank Kevin and Kevin Medill on the piano, Matt Davidge on the woodwinds, and John Ongby on bass, Kim Joyce, and Nancy Crutcher, who are our readers tonight, Michael and Sebastian, who are busily doing our technology for us each week. Thank you. Jesus, pro Jesus proclaims, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. However, he warns that salt can lose its taste and light can be hidden under a bushel basket. Jesus' disciples cannot be passive, even about the ordinary elements of life. Therefore, we need to think about how salt and light bring out goodness and then apply those qualities to our interaction with others. Jesus challenges his disciples to stir up those elements of Christian life that cannot be taken for granted. It's one thing to recite together the articles of faith in a creed but still another to live in our faith in such a way that it has an impact and makes a difference in the world. Each of us has to figure out what that means in our individual lives. We have to work to do, we have work to do as we move forward. You are the salt of the earth, said Jesus. May we season the world with faithfulness, O oh God. You are the light of the world, Jesus also said. May your love shine as through us, O oh Christ our Savior. May your vigor make us bold witnesses, O oh Spirit of the only living God. Go with faith, with love, and with boldness as salt of the earth and light for our world. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you. 